Here is a 2024 Chevrolet Trax 2RS in nitro yellow over jet black and accent interior. This is all new, an affordable variant for the first time in the sense that you're getting upgraded technology, the most safety, and the best bang for your buck. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and that's what we're going to explain is what kind of deal you're getting here compared to the rivals with some pros and cons. Because this is the 2RS, it's going to have a more dynamic fascia. It has a wide stance already, LED headlights, daytime runnings, gloss black elements. Each grille design will be unique to its trim, which the RS will also get the badging in red, the bow ties blacked out. The Active will get the black grill with titanium chrome and all of them is over seven inches of clearance. Front wheel drive is the only option. This is the larger variant compared to the Trailblazer. So if you're looking to get all wheel drive, you will have to go to the Trailblazer. And what makes this a little bit more unique is it has the base engine as the Trailblazer, so it's the 1.2 liter turbo three cylinder, pumping out 137 horsepower with 162 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to a six-speed automatic transmission. This is achieving 28 MPGs for the city and 32 MPGs for the highway. And you have your Stabilit Track, which is your traction control. So you have some performance underneath it. It's not going to be a 500 horsepower sports car. But for an everyday blend, what you're getting is an awesome package. Upgrading to the 2RS, you receive the keypad to get inside the vehicle, 19-inch wheels. It's a two-tone. The base LS will receive 17-inch silver painted aluminum wheels. The 1RS gets the 18 black machine aluminum wheels. But with this, it's going to look the most dynamic because of the color combo and the gloss black elements that's found throughout because of the RS package. Four pistons is in the front, by the way. The Brimbo brakes, just playing. There's not going to be that type of performance for stoppage or from the zero to 60s. But when you're considering your MPGs and it's not a CVT, so if you're looking at the Honda, I mean, this already ticks the box when you're considering, I don't wanna get a CVT transmission. If you're comparing it to Mazda, when you get into a turbo variant, it's gonna be a lot more money. So the bargain deal comes out yet again. And as for the Trailblazer, if you go to the Ecotec Turbo, which is a 1.3 liter, pumping out 155 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque, you gotta be careful which box you tick. Because if you don't go all-wheel drive, it's a CVT transmission. The tracks, there's no tricks, except they forgot to put that shark fin antenna. And I have been asked in the comments multiple times on prior trims. I haven't done this trim. That's why I'm doing it right now as a review. Do they have a shark fin antenna? Right now they do not, but I'm sure it's going to be in the works. And because this is the RS, I understand that we don't have 200 horsepower underneath the hood. So you don't really need exhaust outlets to be shown. It just would look a lot more dynamic for the rear because of that wide stance that's only all over the vehicle and you get the gloss black elements yet again in the rear with the bow ties that are blacked out. And to complete the tracks, it would not be what it is without the Chevy Safety Assist, which includes six standard safety features, starting with automatic emergency braking, frontal collision alert, front pedestrian braking, forward distance indicator, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, and telebeam, and the HD camera for your reversing. Quick release going into 25.6 cubic feet of storage. You have a storage nook here. This is to hold this little thing here so that way you can put anything. It just won't roll around inside. We also have this nice little touch which folds out similar to a Land Rover, Range Rover, or a Jaguar. Basically a storage bag so you can just put items in and they're not gonna roll around. Underneath, we get a spare tire, and we're gonna remove this privacy cover like so, simple enough. And you can do this all with one hand as you're noticing. To split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split if you're tall like me, and that's gonna increase cargo to 54.1 cubic feet, which is 0.2 cubic feet more than the Trailblazer, and it should be because it's over five inches longer. Let's go inside, start it up, so you can hear that exhaust note. Six 
six-way manual adjustment for the driver, four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. The RS gets the contrast stitching, the jet black perforated and heated seats. The active will get power seat adjustment for the driver. Headroom and leg room. The RS is going to be a more sporty interior design. It is a driver focus, a more modern, cleaned up technology dashboard layout. And the contrast will be in the red that is in the circular air vents. And you get the pattern and it goes into the 11 inch touch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi hotspot, throw it into reverse and we get a reverse camera with trajectory. It expands when you turn the wheel. Standard is an eight inch satin aluminum that's going to go around the air vents that is all stationed towards the driver. Standard single climate control, an area to put your cell phone with optional wireless charging. You get the RS badging right here, so it looks a little bit more sporty and aggressive. And another thing, you can also put your phone right here too between the cup holders. The key fob for the new tracks. Everything's cleaned up, so even here the storage is a little bit more accessible. It's going to be more sporty. It opens up into a deep storage pocket. It's not necessarily so wide, but it can still fit quite a bit. Perforated on the sides, heated starts on the RS, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The gauge cluster has an 8-inch reader. It comes standard as a 3.5. And what I like about this touch screen is it's not all touch. You still have a function to turn it on and off and to turn it up and down. Optional sunroof. No auto dimming rear view mirror. And the dash and door panels integrate in together. And it's going to be more of the everyday materials in the top. It's going to be soft right here. And it's going to be more sporty where you rest your arm. One touch down for all the windows, and you get the same pattern that's on the dash right onto the door panel. You have about two bottle areas that's carved out for the storage. For the back seats, headroom and leg room. There isn't any storage behind the driver's seat, but you get some behind the passenger. RS2 gets USB ports and a little cubby right here. You're not going to receive any armrest, and the door is going to have the same materials except it's stripped out of any soft materials anywhere, and the storage pocket is a little bit smaller. Sliding into the center, the floor is basically flat, so feet space, you might share some, but it's pretty wide inside. Button shoulder space is actually really good for the size of this vehicle, and the same thing with headroom, they carve it out for you if you're over six foot tall. 137 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. That's 18 horsepower less than the Trailblazer, and this is over five inches longer than the Trailblazer. So is the motivation going to be slower, and it just has that sporty design on the exterior and the technology-driven interior? That's what we're going to find out. But I do like the color combo, and when you're getting the 2RS, you are unlocking everything LED in the front, which it comes standard LED daytime runnings. I would like to see a little bit of changes just really into the rear with the shark fan antenna and maybe something on the lower to make it look a little bit more aggressive, only because when you're going into the RS, you get all the gloss black elements, you get upgraded wheels. On the 1RS, you're getting 18 inch. Because it's a 2RS, you're getting 19-inch. So it just would make sense that they kept that sport design all the way into the back. I like how wide the stance is because it really feels athletic driving this. The window is large. You get Chevy safety standard, which is six safety features in which it takes this to another class level because when you are looking to option vehicles like Honda, for instance, you have to go up trim levels in order to get certain safety features or features that come into the tracks. Whereas here, you can still option features. Now, it's not going to be the most quiet vehicle in class, but it does have active noise cancelization. And when you get into the 2RS, you're getting six speakers instead of four. And I have heard some rumors about speaker rattling in the door pockets, which 
the only thing that I have came out with from the dealership so far, because it's still such a new car, is they're saying maybe it's the bass or the treble, or maybe one of the speakers may have actually blown, or you just have something that's inside. But what I'm thinking is some of the sound deadening, because they don't really put a lot, as you can hear, everything from the exterior. It's a red light. We're gonna see the performance as soon as it turns green. I mean, you can hear that all the way. Here we go. For an everyday drive, it ticks the box. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, you're getting a lot of features. It is a bargain deal to see something in the mid $20,000 more or less loaded up. Because when you go into Honda, let's face it, it's gonna be more like a $30,000 price. You go into Nissan, the same thing there. Turn radius, a little bit longer than I wanted, around three lanes. Let's rock and roll a little. The one big problem that I have with the tracks is when you're going past 50 miles per hour. So more of your everyday blend drive saying 35 to 45 miles, but when you're getting it up onto the interstate, it does start suffering a little bit, similar to a Mazda because these turbo engines are smaller. So it's not going to drive the same as a four or a six cylinder engine. You're not really expecting that to come out of it anyway. You are getting great MPGs, so you have to kind of weigh out your pros and cons because once you get up to speed, set your adaptive cruise control. For a $25,000, $26,000 car, you get adaptive cruise control i mean you have to start thinking what you're getting as a package going to some other cons you do have to go up trim levels in order to get the usb ports in the back the pros you can option wireless charging you can option a moon roof once you're at certain tier levels the other con though would be that you can only get power seat adjustments in the active which I would like that to trickle down to the RS line because it, it has that sporty style. And even in the interior, because of the two-tone effect, everyone likes the red that just pops. But that will take me to another con in which the jet black interior and everything's black inside the car, it does make it a little bit more gloomy. And because of the deal that you're getting with the tracks, it's hard to complain. Using an example kind of like a big screen TV, if you're not going 8K or Sony or something to that nature, it's really hard to complain about what you're getting because of all the value that's captured inside and you're still getting three year warranty. So if there is any problems, they're gonna take care of the vehicle for three years. So you're going to get your money's worth out of it. It doesn't have a CVT transmission. So it is something that can go a little bit longer distance in the sense that you don't even have to worry about servicing some of the actual components for a longer time than you would a CVT transmission. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Morgan Chevrolet for giving us this 2024 Chevrolet Trax 2RS for our car review.